Hello everybody. My name is Dr. James McKenna and I wanted to say a few words today about what constitutes safe infant sleep. It's probably a little bit surprising to think that safe infant sleep really doesn't begin after the baby is born. Actually safe infant sleep begins with how well the mother takes care of herself during her pregnancy. And indeed other than having a really good diet and supplements and vitamins as would be the recommendations of your physician. Also I would say perhaps the best thing you can do for your baby is not smoke during your pregnancy because actually we find that that really definitely injures brain connections specifically involved in the baby's best defense against crises after it's born. That is to say that brain tissues and connections are injured by smoke inhalation and it makes it very difficult for babies to arouse from a deep sleep. That said, once a human infant is born, it is definitely in the best interest of that baby, as all scientific studies now conclude, that it sleeps within the company and proximity of a committed caregiver. Most ideally, of course, that would be a breastfeeding mother. We now know that safe infant sleep is promoted by mothers who are indeed feeding their babies through the night and remain in sensory proximity to their babies. I'm certain that you know by now that the issue of co-sleeping and particularly bed sharing as a form of co-sleeping is very controversial. And indeed in our culture, we know that while on one hand, mother-baby co-sleeping with breastfeeding certainly evolved and is intrinsically adaptive and beneficial, we also know that beds and furniture and various kinds of structures did not evolve. And so that complicates the otherwise always healthy arrangement of mothers and babies sleeping next to each other. But what I wanted specifically to talk about today is a really safe alternative to bed sharing should families not be able to provide what would be in fact the safest form of bed sharing. And if mothers cannot breastfeed or choose not to breastfeed, then indeed a baby is best not sleeping with the mother in bed. When breastfeeding mothers bed share, for example, they have a heightened sensitivity to the presence of each other, and it really changes the physiology and the behavior of their relationship, and it increases greatly the safety factor. But even if mothers are breastfeeding, there is a less complicated, and perhaps for some people, a less worrisome form of co-sleeping, and it involves a piece of furniture. It's called the arms reach co-sleeper. This is a product that I've been talking about and promoting in my lectures throughout the world for many years now, and I feel very, very comfortable doing it, as I see it as being a really nice compromise to the bed sharing issue. Everybody agrees now, and it is completely recommended that baby should never sleep outside the proximity and contact of its parent. But the debate ensues over what kind of proximity should be maintained. And my reason for supporting this particular product, which often is not the thing that most of us scholars like to do, is that I really do think it's a beautiful compromise and it promotes safety and well-being and easy breastfeeding for mothers, as well as a place for babies to sleep, in a sense, close to their mothers safely when breastfeeding is not involved. I'd like to take an opportunity to show you one particular version of this product and why specifically I think it acts in the best interests of the baby at the same time as promoting attachment and bonding, et cetera, and ease for the mother for her breastfeeding. So my friends, this is one particular version of a arm's reach co-sleeper. Um, typically, we don't go to bed with makeup on, et cetera, and look real pretty in bed with their babies, but of course this is, this is a model, and everybody's supposed to be very happy, and indeed they are. But more importantly, I wanted to show you what this particular product does and what the safety features of it really are. To begin with, it brings the mother and baby close together. And you see here, they're within actual proximity. They're able to hear each other, feel each other. The mom's able to touch. And more importantly, the mother is able to bring the baby in bed with her for breastfeeding, then slip the baby safely to the mattress next to it. This particular version has, as you might note, rails that go up about six or seven inches, and that prevents the mother's body from, in a sense, slipping over and overlapping the baby. It's one thing I like about it. This rail can be dropped to be flush with the bed, but indeed the baby actually lays just slightly lower. There's a little bit of a four-inch drop that permits the baby to have a very, very definite sleep surface here, 
as you can see right here. And with this rail going across, again, that provides just an, an added barrier so that uh, pillows or blankets are typically not going to be overlapping that sleep surface of the baby. This is actually referred to as separate surface co-sleeping. And what is important um, is one actually derives all the benefits of the proximity of the mother and the baby. The baby's able to smell the mother. The baby's able to arouse in relationship to the mother and vice versa. And you have this nice barrier, both this rail here, this rail here, with the drop nest with the baby being about four inches below so the mother after breastfeeding is able to easily put her baby back in. I really am so excited that there does in this kind of product offer alternatives, both a solution to this terrible debate going on about bed sharing, but more importantly, it provides increased opportunities for mothers and babies and fathers to be close to their baby through the night, which contributes yet again to social attachment and to a healthier physiology for the infant. Let me just say in my brief conclusion here that always you will be the best judge of the kinds of care that your baby needs, and only you and your family will know what is, in fact, the safest arrangement for yourselves. Always remember to put your babies on its back, breastfeed if you can, keep that baby close, and these are three primary conditions that will maximize a tremendously healthy relationship for you and your family. Thank you for listening.